Yeah? I love our blog because it's my playground. Uh, it, it's mine. I, you know, I was like, we need a blog. And they said, really? And I said, yeah. And so we, <laughs> so they said, okay, but you're in charge of it. And I said, fine. <laughs> so your background is in, I guess you said you, before you did like websites, PHP. And, mm -hmm. okay, so mm -hmm. you're doing mainly really graphic design, or you're also doing like web app? Uh, no, I, mostly just the PHP stuff and the CSS stuff. But small, like, you know, I'm very interested in your question because that's what I usually work with. I work with non little non-profits, but, you know, that, that's the way I like to build websites. I, I loved being involved in this, but that's what I, that's what I like to do. This big stuff is, is really interesting, but um, it's a very different world. So the blog was built in Google type, and the reason why we did that just had to do with talking about you know being modular and really figuring out what are you going to spend your time on right now. And our web developers were at the time when I felt like I felt like we needed a blog when we launched. And our web developers were just swamped with stuff. And the last thing I wanted to do was to say, can you turn this on too? And <laughs> make it look pretty. So our web host, Sony Imageworks, uh, built the, the blog for me since um, since they, they have understandably a very tight control of their environment and didn't want me just building it. They were set up for that removal. They were so they're set up for removal type. That all of their blogs are removable. So that's why, and, and that's actually a conversation that we had today. How can we bring our blog into our website and when in the timeline can we do that? Because it is kind of silly. Are you excited about that? I'm very excited. Can you not just do our Google type. Can you not just do RSS? Oh, Google type. Oh yeah, we're we're actually yeah no um and no and Drupal. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's actually uh, you know what I don't I don't have it. Um, we're also I mentioned that we're redoing our homepage and this is uh, this is sort of a project management thing as well. We built this site to advertise the show. So we built the site as if it were a film website in a lot of ways. Well, the show has happened. And now, what are people going to come to Stand Up to Cancer to find out? They're not going to come to find out about Mariah Carey and Beyonce and uh, a million other A-list stars, although some still do. But they're going to come to find out where are their donation dollars going. I think. I would. Um, so, so as a result, we're, we're figuring out how to um, maintain the glossiness, but move the um, focus of the website from that sort of, here's a show, a movie poster, um, to here's a site that will tell you what dream teams are cropping up when that starts happening, um, where the money's going, what the results are of that, um, all of those, all of those kinds of so the, the actual homepage is going to change. And you mentioned RSS. Um, you know, that's actually one of the things that we want to do is we want to transform the blog into more of a reporting mechanism as opposed to my playground. Um, and actually make it something that can, you know, it feeds out to our Facebook page. It feeds out to a lot of, you know, we have a relationship with Evan, with WebMD. It feeds to WebMD. It's feeding to all of these places. So. Um, so we can also feed it onto our homepage and really sort of change, the, you know, have a homepage that doesn't make a lot of noise when you first open it up, and um, and actually has more content on it. So it's, that's also about focus and shifting priorities. Um, I feel like I you can keep going. <laughs> is, am I going in a useful direction for everyone? What what modules did you use? Which, which, modules, which modules did you use on the site? It's, it's almost entirely custom built. Is it? Pretty much. Um, so. I mean, there's, there are some things that, that you'll probably recognize, but right now, pretty much everything in the site was custom built for the, the site itself. Um, it's a big achievement. It's a big achievement. Are you going to release those to Drupal? <laughs> That's a good question. And, um, you know, I don't know how useful a lot of that would be with the, the constellation, for oh. example, is so specific. So, but it, it probably would be. So that's a good question. I may have no control over. <laughs> Even if there's parts of it that people can use, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully we will. There, there's, uh, you know, there's a huge 
back end behind us. Uh, you guys <coughs> oh, are you guys monetizing your traffic at all? And if so, which way is there? Is that? Not yet. Um, not yet. That's also something that we're talking about doing. Just so that we can um, potentially, we have a lot of big donors. They do want to know what they're getting. Um, but up until now, what they wanted and what they got was a big presence on the show. So now it's our, so right now we're just monitoring that, not monitoring. Yeah. How many people are involved in managing this site now, and how much daily production do you guys deal with? Um, daily production, as in how many hours go into working on the site? <coughs> um, well, we have on our design team side, we have our, our design and building team, we have three to four people who are still working. Um, one who's working full time every day, um, two who are both doing half time every day, and one who comes in as we need that individual. Um, then we have me working full time. Um, I have somebody to help me push assets, um, like videos and things like that. Um, and then we have, um, then at the, on the Sony Imageworks side, we have somebody there to push um, patches and things like that two days a week. Um, because we have, we have absolutely no control over our servers, so it has to go to them to go live. Um, and then we have a couple other people here and there. So it varies, but on a daily basis, probably about four or five people working. So it's not like a lot of front end people admin, but is there like still development happening mm -hmm. at most pipe? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Probably that if you already answered this, but how did you decide to use Drupal for the site? <laughs> we decided to use Drupal because there was no money and no time. And so um, since since what we needed to do needed an extensive CMS and there wasn't time to custom build it. There also wasn't time to pay for something costly. So Drupal seemed like the most robust, um, I believe it is, the most robust option that we had available to us. What is there to do with it? I, I wasn't on board at the time. I was, I was brought in a couple of weeks after that decision was made. Yeah, um, my question was, uh, the, uh, so the different teams that were involved with this, mm -hmm. uh, with their interaction with Drupal, I, I'm sure they cursed a couple days, but um, they pretty much most of the people that were involved, especially being new to Drupal, did they walk away uh, essentially admiring Drupal for what it has out of the box? Mm -hmm. Really? Um, I would say that our Witten Heart team definitely um, came out admiring Drupal. There, there were curses. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think the only person who never cursed Drupal was me, <laughs> which is interesting when you think about it. Um, but um, you know, I would say that our ImageWorks team um, is is not as in love with Drupal just because the website yeah. took everything down a couple of times and um, and it hasn't been properly optimized yet. Which is just the reality of how much time yeah. we have. In so. I think for everybody it's a learning process. I think everybody was kind of intrigued. So, so who actually did the, the theme when you guys went in? I mean, you said you're working in conjunction with that design firm and that people are living hard. So did you guys come together at, at one point, or were they talking to each other? I'm kind of curious how you guys came together on that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's complicated, just because it's the film industry, and a lot of people were donating their talents. Um, so, so really, like we had the logo designed, and then we had a color palette that was created, and then that was given to Whitman Hart, and then Whitman Hart had to kind of go with that and stick with that. Um, but then, because what Whitman Hart, so I, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question because I don't think there really is a, a direct answer. It was more, it wasn't ever really coming together as much as this asset gets done, and then this asset gets done, and then they start to sort of inform each other. So it seems like the the uh, Women Heart did all all the website actual building, and then the yeah. designers just did like the layout, exactly. maybe the colors and stuff like that. Right. Okay. right. And then we also had I mean, we had a team um, called Trigger who did our Facebook application, um, 
and so they had you know their design people, and that ended up influencing. I, I think you saw the little stand graph at the bottom, which looks different, I think, from the rest of our, our website. Um, Since 2003, the government's cancer research budget has been cut every single year. This lack of funds pits scientists against one another. It's new treatment. Okay, um, so the stand graphic is inspired by the look of the stand itself. Um, and then it has a different look from the rest of the website, but if you look at it, you can probably start to right. see that you know, it's a great it influenced this. server architecture that this is running on? How many web servers, load balancing, database? Yeah, um, we have a load balancer um, right now. We have um, a read, yeah, we have two read databases. We have a write database. It's running on Red Hat Linux. Um, and it's, um, we're, but, well, we have the, that's, that's what we're running right now. Basic core of what we're Is there anything else specific you wanted to know? No, just like how many servers, yeah. web servers. Uh, do you guys have development server? Yes, we do. Yeah, and actually, that's very important. That's for for you if you yeah. to, to set up a project. Um, definitely have a dev server. Always. Yeah, it's it's actually a lot of fun. We, you know, it, it's one of the reasons why I could let um, the woman who does the magazine articles, why I can sort of let her off loose because I can tell her just like, do it in depth first and it looks good and so I'm not call me. How do you guys manage that? How, how do we how do we manage the dev server? Yeah, because I imagine the live server has you've got independent users in the database. Um, it, it's it's its own database. It's not connected to our actual database. So, so how do you I guess my question is so how do you develop on dev and then push it out? Okay. Um, we we test it on dev. We don't actually develop on dev. We just test it on dev. It's developed. Um, Whitman, okay. well, I mean, it, there's actually two levels of dev. There's Whitman Hart has their own dev, which is where they develop everything and actually build it. And they do have a data. They have an occasional data dump. Dump of all of our database um, so that it's pseudo up to date, but it's not necessarily exactly the same. Um, you know, the site actually looks. If you go to dev, you, you know you're in dev. Uh, otherwise, you freak out. So, so you're not you're not ever pushing content out from dev. No, the content is all coming through Google, through through live. Right, Google. right. We'll test it on dev first, and then we'll do it in okay. So you do the work. Well, she'll do the work on your dev server, and then do the work over again. Copy and paste. Yeah. yeah. So it's really it works really well for us. Were you guys using like a, a code repository that sort of manage the code or? Do we, do we have any final questions for Rain about the Stand Up to Cancer campaign using Drupal? Which I think it, it's a great looking site. It, it has a nice job. Screen Drupal. Yeah. So that's good. Very good. Excellent. Uh, is the video questions? sitting on your server? Is that being fed like, through AOL? It's, it's, well, it's through a CDN. Um, but you, we were feeding it through AOL. Um, Go with the show. <laughs> we didn't want yeah. we we didn't want our um, our site getting those hits. But now it's back to our website, um, and it's right now this isn't ideal. And again, um, you know we're we're improving it. So it's your own your, your own Flash application doing it. Yeah, it's a Flash application. <laughs>
Charlie. So you had any videos through the Drupal administration? Um, with okay. The, Very cool. Yeah. So, and by the way, if you are bored in the middle of the night, um, if you're bored in the middle of the night and you want to watch some really funny stuff, I think that this this one's my favorite. Um, this one's my favorite. Funny or die, Henry Winkler, Cancer Interrupts Your Life. So if you're really bored and want to watch something funny, um, that, that's a good one. Any final questions for Ray? Nice job. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Rain. I think we all are quite impressed by the, at least the design of the site. Well, excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Um, did, you guys, did you guys enjoy that? You guys yeah. get quite a bit out of that? Very good. Wonderful. Okay. Um, we are actually getting ready to kind of do some of the final bits for tonight. So what we'll do is go back to the LA Drupal. Uh, so now for the final piece, uh, we're going because we try to finish between nine and nine thirty, and I want to give everybody time to network and chat, uh, especially since there's some first timers here. Uh, get to meet the other people, um, find people that might contract for you, uh, stuff like that. So I want to ask if there's any job opportunities available right now. If people would like to make some verbal announcements, does anybody have a job that they want to offer? Well, I'm no? looking for consultants. <laughs> Your name? Ben. Ben. Yeah. Where, uh, uh, where are you based out of? I'm down in Laguna Woods right now. Laguna Woods? Yeah. Okay. It's down south. So if you're down to travel through the five, right? Yeah, five, four, five, I know it all. There you go. Um, cool, so we have Laguna Woods. Anybody else? Designer positions or? Go ahead. Oh, for a developer. Developer, go for a development company. <coughs> for a, a magazine. Mm -hmm. Can you say who? Uh, yeah, it's a magazine called Inside Weddings. And it's the eighth. It's the eighth largest bridal publication. Inside. Inside weddings. Is it one of those fat wedding books? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's it's one of those. Fat. They're thick. They're thick. I, I mean, you can knock somebody out with some of those bridal you know, things. More ways than one. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the prices on a couple of pages. So I'm like, wait, turn this out. Okay. Um, wonderful. So, what we're based out of? Uh, it's. West Hollywood. West Hollywood? Yeah, like LA Sunset. Okay, uh, immediate position, I imagine. What's that? Immediately available? Uh, yeah, because we're, we've are we been trying to go through a couple different developers, but it's just, you know, trying to find the right one. Drupal work, or you're looking for We're something? definitely going in Drupal. We tried to roll our own, but that just failed miserably. And so now we're all about Drupal. We're in a good camp. All right. <laughs> we have everything designed and everything. Cool. All the specs are all done. All so do you, need, uh, do you need also a front end person? Yeah, we need a femur and... The yeah. Okay. All right. So um, again, these people who have made their announcements that they're looking for a contractor or they have somebody full time work, um, please hit them up if you're looking for that type of work. So cool. Thank you for everybody mentioning your jobs. Uh, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up tonight, uh, kind of light. Um, what I'm going to ask is similar to how we do the community questions. Which actually, you know, what, I'll do one quick pass. Is there any other community questions? Like somebody has a question about Drupal, let's cover these, yeah. Yeah, the Drupal Camp LA. So um, I was asking you then about it. Um, the DVD for all the lectures being, uh, being okay. done, work habit, I guess, would be editing them. Yeah, um, so then uh, I'll bring up a point. I'll mention Drupal Camp LA right after, but let's take a question I about Drupal sure itself. Too. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, uh, Drupal question? Yeah, we were talking to Mike a minute ago about the, uh, the API module. And we were just looking for it. It doesn't seem like it's out for Drupal 6. Does anyone know if it is out or where to get it? API module is what actually runs api.drupal.org. Oh, that's right. I tried this module. Well, what's really nice about it is if you're running it locally, is you have the API for all the contributed modules that you might be running also but that aren't up there. The, but the way it works, though, is it's a, you install on site, but it can crawl other sites, though, right? So you can use the five version crawl. Oh, maybe that's what, that would make sense. Uh, right. uh, okay. that's, that's, good. that's good. That's what they have running on. I mean, oh, the maybe that's what you're having. Let me give you a history. For those who don't know, uh, the official Drupal API, which is its code base, its functions, if you will, 
Um, there's essentially an API website that lists everything for each version of Drupal, so you can search for a certain function name or something that deals with theming. Uh, well, if you want to have your own version of that whole API uh, kind of catalog, you can run and install this module on your own Drupal 5 site and have the whole Drupal thing. I actually got into it because I thought it would actually let me add more APIs so well, I could make my master library. It does. It, 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 it Dude, goes. I was going off <laughs> and I, you know, <laughs> but, but, but it But it'll go out and it'll crawl your contributed installs. Okay. Which, so if you've got those modules installed and they're, they've got the comments that, you're, that you should have, um, so if they're written in a standard way, it'll go through and it'll write. So Blake sounds like he knows the magic. I was reading about that. Uh, you, I think, if I catch me wrong, but you install it on Drupal 5 site on your local host, but then you have other installations on your local host as well that you tell it to crawl um, the code. So, yeah, because I mean, obviously they have it running yeah. on API on Drupal over. So. I'm going to read that again. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's worth reading. Um, I actually just, I don't know, to geek out for a second, I actually tried to use it to catalog like the jQuery API as well. And, you know, I, I was trying to pick up JavaScript libraries because if anybody knows, uh, and I'm going to do a very, very shameless plug right now. Um, basically, my extend us website, right? I got to bring this up. So I actually run a Drupal site. I do extensions for like Dreamweaver and other um, kind of types of development software. Uh, and basically, I did the Drupal API, which just got an update. Code coloring works. Okay, Adobe, Adobe fixed my stuff. And normally, I would say Adobe fixed my shit, but it was actually just very small, so it wasn't a big deal. They helped me fix this. Code coloring works. It recognized, I mean, you don't have to do any manual edits to Dreamweaver anymore to understand dot .module, dot .install. I mean, it does the whole API. It, it actually, I could use Dreamweaver more now uh, for my Drupal stuff, so I was happy about that. Um, so actually, I have a prototype API extension and a jQuery one. And keeping up with these is a pain, um, and I wanted to do more, so I was trying to use the API module to catalog all this. Uh, prototype is like jQuery. It's a JavaScript library framework, stuff like that. So um, yeah, I mean, keeping other APIs, that makes sense. But modules, anybody uh, develop or check out Muse or Panels? Okay, more people should definitely look at those modules, okay? Those are God modules, definitely. Um, those modules have a lot of functions in them, and they're not documented whatsoever in the API because they're contributed modules, even though they're used religiously. Uh, being able to pluck out how you use a function or something like that, you gotta yeah. dig in the code. And if you dig in the code, they're documented really well. You know, okay, <laughs> Views is the worst yeah, example. There's good documentation. Views has a good, yeah, a good set of comments, but there are many modules that don't, so yeah. catching every function kind of is lame when you have to open text files. Yeah, for yeah. API, not for Views. Yeah. Yeah. We heard something fun? No? No, I'm saying there's still an actual official, like, CSS list, which is not shape for everything. Yeah, there's that, but it's kind of hard to find an actual just a core list. I think I don't I don't think it's in the handbook or anything, is it? Listing the list. It's in the Zen. It's in the Zen tool. If you use the Zen module, they have. I know, but somebody made a, a couple of people made comments on Drupal.org about this same thing, which is there's no actual complete like all the um, there's never no complete core listing, you know, like. Um, all the CSS that you can do? Yeah, like everything that comes standard. Yeah, that changes for theme, though, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. CSS. They, but there's still. been a lot of talk, and if you go out to the theming group, there's been a lot of talk about CSS standards right now. And the reason, one of the reasons you can't have it is you still don't have a CSS standard. So it's, it's hard well, to go I through mean, and grab. I, I kind of hate to say it, but if you go, if, if you go and look at other CMSs, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not uncommon for them to actually have a, a list of all the core, you know. Um, I, I definitely see that. So for those that, that maybe you're thinking we're hardcore geeking out on the side here, sorry. Um, essentially what uh, we're talking about is that Drupal, since it has a theme engine layer, you can basically come up with any amounts of themes that you even can dream up. And the problem with that, it's both a blessing and a curse, is there's no predefined set of rules, you know, how you're kind of supposed to attack all those different themes besides just how to look it well, into Drupal. I mean, for example... Well, naming uh, conventions of divs. Yeah, what's, you know, a, uh, 
what is it called? Pagination or you know, the number and model? Yeah, pagination. Yeah. I mean, that's something that comes with the court, doesn't it? Yeah. No? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Isn't it? No, it's true. Right so right so that's like just okay. a, a bad example, but that's an example of one of the ones that, you know, affects. But that's the, yeah, so I mean, there's no real, you know, there's no real nice collected list of, you know, how do I get to that one little thing and change it the way I want it to look? You know, it's, there's it's a lot not, of reading involved. It's not involved. being engine um, specific, it's core specific. That's why it, it's a fire Yeah, yeah. 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. Don't give me stress. So, okay, let's, so, uh, but if somebody has a question, you know, while we're all kind of here talking for the rest of the meeting, then that's cool, bring up your question, feel free. But what I want to do is I want to give everybody time to bring up the sessions they enjoy, the things they learn, especially new modules that they discovered at the camp. So um, if you want to just go ahead and speak from your chair, go ahead, if you'd like to come up, uh, feel free and actually come up. Do you have anybody that would like to point out what they learned at the camp and thought it was great or did think it was great? Getting that negative part. I learned how to get to the convention center. We have somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it was great. And I'm still um, pretty new to Drupal and I do mostly theming. But um, one thing I, I guess I did like is I went to some theming. You know, we definitely laid out in the tracks like beginner, themer, developer. And in the theming track, I think especially for yours, Mike, uh, there are people who never even used Firebug before yeah. were in that. Okay. And so that kind of, I mean, you know, we yeah, obviously want to bring people into the community, but you have someone who doesn't. You know how to use Firebug, or not even over CSS, and you're in a theming workshop. Yeah, I think that's one of the play, one of the w ways we got lucky, which is uh, both Blake and Mike Thorne, Michael Thorne, who's not here. Three of us talked about, hey, what are you doing? And, and I said, hey, I was going to do a real. How do, how do you do a real mock-up and make it work in Drupal without knowing anything about Drupal? But let's build on it. And so that's that's basically what what we did, and that's why I was able to talk about Firebug because normally I wouldn't be able to. It's like I've got 45 minutes to talk about something, but I knew Michael Thorne was going to get more into. Okay, now let's break apart functions in the theme engine, and then really let Blake just you know tear the whole thing apart. No, I thought that was good. It was just that like you know beginner. If you've never really even used it, like maybe you should just. I don't know if that was like very clear. Like I'm not trying to be the leadest at all. Yeah, but it's like no, it's, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, we. you you know, we, we run into that even with our meetings here, and, and like quite a few of us that come to a lot of the meetings, I you know I come around and I ask you guys, what do you guys want to see? You know, is the stuff too boring? Is it too light? So yeah, I mean it's really tough, and a lot of people really are just also I see excited that they, there's so much to learn from Drupal, uh, and I mean the biggest compliments that we got was like this was like the most important thing I needed to get a hand on to Drupal, you know and. Hearing that was just like, yes, that's exactly why we did it. Because there's other camps and there's conferences and there's training sessions and then there's the, uh, the traveling training sessions like the coming up due with Drupal and all that. And you know, you, got, you know, you pay money for some of that stuff. And we set out to make sure that this was definitely something to educate you know, people, not just ourselves, because I mean, I, I, I definitely saw at least three sessions I wanted to go to myself. I didn't get to attend any of them. I think I stayed into one 12 minutes long and I felt like I was there an hour. Um, but, you know, we did that to help bring up the level of Drupal knowledge, not just for developers and designers, but the people who are just starting from scratch, you know, and that was a big focus for us in that event. Uh, and, and I think some of you who actually deal with direct clients can appreciate this. We have to retrain, we have to train everybody who's new to us, you know, who comes to us for a new project. You know, you can't just walk away with a logo and colors and just start to go at it. There's always those two, three people that you have to take under your wing a little bit and show them how you add a new page. You know, what, when you want to update, you know, a little section, how does that go? But to, you know, um, Drupal's um, kind of a, a, a testament to Drupal, you know, once the, the, the first three times they do it, you know, this is slightly rocky, you never hear from them after the fourth time. You know, they're just doing it. You know, they're editing pages like nothing. You know, in fact, too much. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, I put a bad thing in there, and it's usually because it's a bad bold tag. You know, um, stuff like that. <laughs> so you know, we try to cover a lot. It's actually it was very tough to make sure that we had three tracks, and fill, filling up the tracks was its own kind of difficulty. Uh, but also making sure that we had good sessions to feed the audience. 
You know, because all of us, we want to see something like advanced views or advanced CCK. I mean, you know, give me, give me, give me, I'm down for that. You know, but, you know, basics, blocks. What is a block? I mean, you know, somebody, they, they can look at it and call it, oh, you know, well, it's a sidebar. You know, well, no, there's a sidebar and there's blocks that go in the sidebar, you know. So, I'm kind of, what I'm leading to is, you know, it, it happened at the camp, but it's something that I think a lot of you who attended the camp really should try to take away and think like, you know, how am I actually explaining this stuff to my clients, you know, uh, my coworkers even, because uh, a lot of that is very important. So, if we're all on the same page in terms of lingo, you know, and resources, you know, like the links list and uh, thank you for the smashing uh, list. That's great. You know, if we all know the right place to go. Uh, then I think we all actually get to, you know, go home at a reasonable time um, because we're sharing knowledge, important knowledge, um, you know, and that's why I thank people for coming out and do the case studies, you know, all those who have presented at an LA Drupal meeting and who presented at the camp, thank you, your time is very valuable, um, and uh, the service that you provided is invaluable, so I appreciate that a lot. I think I got a little bit too far on the camp. I was just really happy. I mean, I, I saw what up, what else? So I, what? Saw some, I saw a lot of smiling faces, so I, I really enjoyed it. But I want to hear what you guys liked. Yeah, I mean, and also not. I, I you know, I'm, I feel like I got a lot of knowledge in Drupal, and the cool thing about the camp was there was a lot of extended information that I learned. That, I mean, it was tied into Drupal, but it was also non-Drupal specific. Like going to uh, Adam's talk from Work Habit on cloud computing. I didn't really know much about Amazon's EC2 and about virtualization and, and ways that you, know, you can run these sites now on, on these virtual type of hosting. Um, that was really good. Uh, also, you know, Adam talked here as well about scaling Drupal. That was a fantastic, you know, even seeing it a second time yeah. is just as good because, you know, just reinforced a lot of. Uh, and that's a great that, one for beginner and intermediate people to go to because... That's a really good point because yeah. I, I got to pull apart that video and post it. So everybody who missed that, go check it online because watching it a second time, some of the stuff that he says really it's, sinks it's, in. It's, it's, it's really like, good. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, because I, I, I didn't realize how much I missed the first time. Yeah, and I came I prepared here. to even ask more yeah. questions this yeah. time and learn about a lot of uh, other tools. So um, not only extensions, but did it really actually feel like you were getting insight on the next level? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I think watching that particular uh, discussion to get, you know, to squeeze every ounce of caching and performance out of your server the easy way, like, that's, it's a must see for anybody that runs a, a site that gets decent traffic. Yeah. So, and then, you know, like I said, I learned a lot of non-Drupal specific tools to be able to, to benchmark, to be able to test. Uh, I found that to be really good. Um, yeah, we need to add some of that. Yeah, and even Mike's talk on, I, I was, you know, I used VMware in the past. I wasn't familiar with VirtualBox, which is the new, this new open source uh, virtualization system. And, you know, Mike basically showed how he created an image with all the tools that you could use to develop a Drupal site, all open source, you know. Yeah. So there was a VirtualBox image with Linux on it, with and, a couple and other and tools. I actually and, finally got the image. I, I finished it. In, Time. Yeah. So, um, just once if again, anybody yeah. wants it, but it, it's it's an open source, full debugging capabilities, free, um, Drupal setup five, six, and seven. Um, yeah. So I mean, you can run on any platform, Mac. Um, yeah. For those who are not familiar, if you run like Windows or Mac, you can get uh, this software called VirtualBox, which allows you to run virtual machines on your own machine. So you can install Linux, and it doesn't reformat your machine or partition a drive. Uh, it uses space on your hard drive and it emulates. The file. You know, um, yeah, yeah basically you know, emulates it in a virtual uh, like window. And uh, what Mike did is he created a whole collected image, which is uh, Ubuntu, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. Ubuntu Linux desktop, plus with a bunch of development applications already installed uh, generally pre-configured to a it's degree. Totally right? pre yes. PHP so, Eclipse, totally set up and yep. set up with debugging, which is the hardest part to do. Yeah. I, I will attest to that. It took me four nights. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I was so happy. It took me longer. This is open so source. So if you're actually interested in maybe trying to kind of get away from proprietary uh, software for your development in your day-to-day -day life, um, his image, would I, I would definitely recommend grabbing it because it gives you a taste of a Linux desktop 
and the free applications that you're going to want to use, uh, and especially coming from a Drupal developer. So I think that that's kind of a great, you know, uh, I think it's a great build and a great release. So I mean, thank you for releasing that. Uh, that was really cool. And actually, he demoed it and showed it off at the camp. Uh, so that was great. I saw a couple of points here about the camp, right? Um, I just want to say that I really liked the, the talk uh, on the social networking uh, site. That was really good. With, I think his name is Joshua. Mm -hmm. uh, that was great. And he had Chuck E. Cheese in the presentation and everything. It was, that was a really good uh, uh, presentation. He's a really sharp guy. And, um, and of course, Blake's too. What did everybody think of the format? Did you guys like the tracks? Did that no. help? Did you guys have trouble picking between yeah, the two? Yeah, that's a good thing, huh? Yeah. I could have gone twice. <laughs> I would have thrown it twice in the same day. I'd have paid twice. Huh? I'd have paid twice. No. Sometimes an hour didn't seem like enough. Yeah. Okay. Say that so, again. Uh, an hour didn't seem like enough for some of the sessions. Which yeah. Is, uh, uh, it's fair um, that something's doing more time. How can we solve the problem of. Because, you know, there were a couple of times that I had, oh, I want to go to all three of these, but then I had two in a row that I just didn't care about. So for two hours, there wasn't that much that was going on. And then, well, then you should have issued birds of a feather. You know, my, my, what might help for next year is have the, have the tracks maybe on a website prior to the event and have people vote and show interest. And then if you see, like, really heavy interest on a, on a certain one, you break them out. You, you split them up so make that, sure we don't put something yeah, in make sure that you don't, yeah, yeah, make sure you don't have concurrent sessions within the track that have a lot of people interested. Yeah, uh, other campsites, and I mean, you know, not to knock our site down because, you know, a few of us spent some time on it. Um, you know, other sites have profiles and session submission and voting of sessions and stuff. And, you know, we, we were trying to really balance time, uh, you know, with what we could pull off between a couple of us and still kind of run the group in a live form. Uh, you know, in person, and of course, pay the bills. Uh, and so it was, uh, it was challenging, and we, we got some feedback. And uh, definitely, you know, we actually plan to make sure that the campsite, and I don't know here, I'll bring it up, um, that the campsite actually goes beyond the camp. Um, oh, yeah, we're actually trying to build it up more. Uh, yeah, so basically, what we're going to do is make sure that this site is somewhat active, at least, in an archive sense. Nice. So this is where we're going to come for the videos. This is where we definitely will be expanding it to allow people to sign up because we want that social kind of environment to happen. Uh, you know, I think Lullabot does a great job at using, uh, I think, organic groups for every training session they offer. And basically, they invite you to the groups that you bought a ticket for. And people are still talking through these groups on Lullabot's website. So we want to see that same kind of uh, continuous dialogue through the year. And also, too, especially since we've gotten a lot of video, you know, at this camp. I mean, two days of free training sessions for Drupal. You know, uh, two thirds are done in HD. You yeah. know, <laughs> so I had to bring up a point I asked earlier. Uh, we are going to try, and I have to get approval from the Drupal Association on this, but we're going to try to do some donation DVDs, and basically get all the videos on the DVDs, and you make a very fair donation to LA Drupal. Okay, and you get the DVD. Now, we're going to post everything online. But the whole point is, one, some people can't download all day a bunch of videos. Some people like to just get it and be done with it. Okay, So it's a convenience thing, and it's, of course, coming back to us. Okay, We have a couple other things. Uh, we didn't get to do a t-shirt. People wanted to see a t-shirt happen. So instead, we're going to do a commemorative t-shirt. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, literally the three, four bucks that you know that we get from Zazzle or whatever it is, Cafe Press, uh, that's going to come back to LA Drupal, you know, to pay for a lot of our, uh, you know, miscellaneous costs and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I'm the one buying all the pins and a lot of the stickers and a lot of freebies, you know, uh, extend us sponsors that. And so I don't mind, uh, but definitely, you know, because we can get a lot. You know, for LA Drupal, with even just a little bit coming in, um, it'll be beneficial for everybody. Um, hosting costs, I, I mean, the day Hot Drupal calls and says, dude, your videos are killing us, uh, you know, we want to be prepared for that, and we want to be fair. Um, so I think we might have to actually buy a Blip TV account. Mike, you hear me? Yeah, we're probably, with the donation money, I'm planning to actually pay for the Blip TV account. No, but so free. we can have more space. But free, we, we can actually charge. 
we can actually we can actually put advertising there to both gain revenue. Yeah, but yeah we don't have to be really quick on it. So. Okay, all right, well, we'll look at it. So, yeah, I mean, we're just really making yeah, sure that we're going to be able to support the cap. Um, plus, getting some donation money from the commemorative t shirt, I know it sounds funny, but that would get us a jump start at next year's cap. Okay, and it doesn't have to stay at a cap. We can talk about some like other events, code sprints, okay, different things. More comments about the cap. One more event, scale. Oh, duh. If you guys like your <laughs> cap LA, we're going to do yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, duh. whole session. Scale. Can somebody speak to that? What's scale? Yeah. It's the Southern California Linux Expo. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's in the Here. Bunch. All right, go. I'm, I'm, just, I'm in the shirt. Yeah, so. yeah he's wearing the shirt. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Blake said it all. <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, Southern California Linux Expo. Um, Mary, when is it? It is. The Westin. March spring. Yeah. 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 It's at the Westin Hotel at LAX. So it'll be the same spot. Um, we're. They're running Drupal now. They weren't last year. The um, website, the website, uh, which is which is cool. Um, but we're going to host a Drupal booth. I'm actually top and organized. I guess it's good that I stood up here. I forgot about this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I'm doing way too much. Um, you said the booth. So so we've got a Drupal booth, but we've also got a whole Drupal track. Um, I'll, I'll tell you more. So, so LA Drupal, especially yeah. Mike, is definitely stepping up and <laughs> helping uh, the scale conference uh, 7x. Uh, last year was 6x. Uh, actually, I have a photo right here of Chad Cross, Mike Stewart, and Blake Lucchese. Uh I took a photo, so I'm not in there. But basically, this is the three dudes hanging out at the Drupal booth. Uh, our booth was very popular. We had Red Hat. Uh, I hope most of you are familiar. We had Red Hat right across from us, and when I was there, I saw our booth have better traffic than Red Hat's booth, and our people would not leave our booth, okay, because they like, I mean, they like talking, they're doing it now, um, you know, and, uh, <laughs> so I was gonna say, and you know, and definitely to us, the, the MySQL group came by, the PostgreSQL came by, Joomla, they didn't leave our booth, you know, so. I, I, I say that, they have my people with in Jeff, but, but, <laughs> 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 yes, because, um, Blake, Blake actually came up, uh, we, 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 I helped organize uh, Linux World uh, Expo up in San Francisco, helped talk um, a couple people, because we actually had to pay for the booth up there, um, and it was not worth it compared to scale, um, but we, we, had, we actually went out and drank with the general guys afterwards. Their community too. Um, we all learned quite a bit about each other, uh, the software. Um, but I'm gonna quit talking. <laughs> so there, so do not people are people too. I guess that's what you're trying to say here. More stuff about camp? Okay. Can uh, maybe next year uh, Drupal camp we uh, have bumper stickers? Okay. I'm like waiting for the I'm waiting for the droopy, the little like a, you know how they have triple A sticker. I want like a droopy sticker that's a circle on the same that's side. That's a fun idea. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a fun idea. All right, see, she's driving to LA. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah but don't put it on your bicycle now. There you go. Well, actually, tonight we have, uh, for those who don't uh, have them yet, we have some LA Drupal pins and normal Drupal pins. Um, so you want more freebies? Well, <laughs> no, just a bumper sticker. Or just, <laughs> just, just a bumper sticker. Yeah. I think it's great. I, think I definitely put one on my car. Yeah, um, who? Aquia gave out their stickers. Yeah, so Aquia, uh, yeah, Aquia had some stickers. Uh, Metallica, had Metallica had some stickers. Hey, we got Metallica so, stickers there. Sponsors had stickers. Yeah, okay, left over. I'll try to make sure that we have some stickers yeah. too. No, but I mean, these are the things that you don't want to hear. What do you got? What do you got, Mark? No, Aquia sticker. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. No, the best were the. Uh, Karen gave out the uh, Darth Drupal sticker. Hey, I didn't get that. <laughs> I was looking for those. I, I got two. I'll give you one. Please. <laughs> Please? Darth Drupal. That yeah, that's a pretty cool one. Okay. Um, also, let me see what I saw at the camp myself. Uh, I think uh, the session being posted, I think, was uh, helpful for people, but a lot of people didn't know where to look or even to go around the corner. Uh, so next year, and this is not so much as something for me, but this is for you guys, spark networking sessions early. 
pick a birds of a feather. For those who don't know what that is, that's basically an impromptu little freebie session. Okay, help. So we had and thank you to all the people who helped install Drupal yeah, on the fun install fun. fest. Okay, I think that was successful for being so quick and late that actually I think we should make it official during the camp. Yeah, no, I, um, it was a good bad camp. I know that's. Chris Bryant was helping, and I think he thought. Yeah, I mean, Chris Bryant from Bad Camp, so uh, Gravitech, he's, he's uh, out. from he's San Francisco, cool. he sat there along with Nicole. Thank you. I mean, other people were there helping install Drupal for the first time. And I walked in. When I see people go, there it is! <laughs> I walk right out because I know I don't want to mess with that vibe because I know how that is. You know, I'm going to come by and ask too many questions, and then they're going to forget how they installed the darn thing. So um, I, I didn't want to throw people off, but what I saw was great from you people who were definitely involved. So thank you to all the volunteers. Everybody who even is not here but is going to watch the video, we have people with their projectors. So, I mean, you guys really came out. Um, I want to keep. I need to keep hearing more feedback. You know, you, you guys cannot really bombard me with too much feedback, whether it's negative or good. Okay, um, we are definitely looking to make sure that we are continuing this camp annually and retaining that it's free. Okay, um, but besides just the camp, I want to hear what you guys are interested in seeing for yourselves. Okay, so even provide selfish comments. In terms of, I want to learn this. How come you haven't gotten this out there for us here in LA? Okay. How, I, how about if you want this for monthly meeting? I mean, yeah. don't forget we still maintain. Yeah, I mean, we're looking for topics that we yeah. cover in monthly meetings. Uh, you know, I'm always hitting up people to train and uh, to help start some training sessions. Blake and I are always trying to see if we can squeeze in some training. Okay. Uh, knowing the topics, I'll get right to you. Oh, I have some topics. Yeah, topics? Okay, hold. Um, one of the things I hear all the time from, from other people is um, wanting to see um, something on views and CCK. Yeah. I mean, all, I, I, all I heard that 16 times every hour. <laughs> yeah. I think it's true that those two modules need to essentially, and I'm, I'm doing this on video for a reason, those two modules definitely need to, you know, kind of come into the fold and normal Drupal. Like doing filtering and... Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot that goes involved to using views efficiently and then developing for views. I mean, how many people use views? I asked, and there were a couple here. Okay, um, those who have used views can. I mean, you guys know it's you guys got the UI, but then there's a whole other world of views when you can use it through your code base. Um, so those are definitely advanced topics, and I'm actually trying to work something really good for that. Uh, panels, that's another one I've gotten a couple people to request, right? <laughs> huh? So I've done two, but I did another Yeah, I, I mean, Blake has been kind enough to definitely show off panels, and I think Mike, he did, uh, Michael Thorne. Okay, here's my question. So the question is? Okay, how do you, as a designer, how do you start with the layout, and then take, like, a Photoshop layout, and then take it and create a panel, and then how do you go through the process? Mike, didn't you cover that in your session at the Drupal camp? Covering a uh, design mock-up yes. to a Drupal team? Yeah, sort of. Two, yes. Uh, yes, that was the intention. Um, in fact, I showed how we built this, how we built Drupal, Drupal camp LA. Um, I didn't show the actual graphic process. I guess the graphic process. I didn't think it was necessary. I figured, maybe it is, but I figured I'm teaching Drupal, how to, so so I'm assuming that you guys already know the graphic, how, how to create the graphics. I guess it's more the theme part of it. Yeah, since going from the, now I'm going to do the graphics, I, I can yeah, yeah, run Photoshop, but yeah, it's like, and you know, this, this, um, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's that gap, I mean, that bridge that you have um, to definitely cross. It's, yeah, I'm, other I'm people, aware. Other we'll make sure that we get something slated for other sure, people brought this specifically up. for that. Other people have brought this up too, uh, fireworks. Uh, you can use Fireworks too, which is also an excellent right. application. Um, Anyone who use Fireworks here? I use Inkscape is also which, really good. Which, by the way, I mean, Photoshop really isn't a web app. I mean, uh, it never really was kind of intended to be, and uh, Fireworks kind of is. Um, no, you know, I know that. But it's Photoshop's such a good design. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good design. It's, it's totally different. It's, yeah. In, in terms um, of user interface, for sure. I, I hate it. <laughs> but 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 no, I, it's, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying but it's industry totally standard. But just the process of like breaking, breaking your first yeah. Right. What's your panels 
taken Sorry. down to pieces, then taken down into the themes, what CSS goes with it, you know, step what, by step. What you're talking about is PSD to CSS X, HTML. Well, no, no. Yes, no. but also that, I mean, that one element is like, how do I break it up so Drupal can have its own TPL files? Well, that's I mean, the next. That, that is the next phase, yeah. yeah I, probably could, the next I could do CSS and HTML for a static page from Photoshop, but how to, I, can't, I don't know how to take it. Let me, let me, let me you can do a quick poll. Uh, and, and this is something that I'm saying on camera, Mike, we, we want to edit out because this is only, I'm asking people here. <laughs> Lack of a better term, we don't want to keep regurgitating the same information over and over, especially if it's videoed and archived, okay? But if, you're, if you want to come and present on panels and you haven't presented yet, come and show panels. You know, show your spin on it, show your tape, okay? I think we all gain something from just talking to somebody or hearing how they used it. Did my machine go off? Okay. But it's actually better for the So, um, but why? Because it takes away the light. Um, light yeah, light. Um, okay, so, uh, so theming, some, some theming stuff, some points there. By the way, that comment that I made about the CSS core class and everything kind of relates to what she's talking about. The levels? Well, bring it, yeah, bring it to, over to the Drupal side. Yeah, you have to have that foundation of web standards, CSS, you know, no matter what you're going to go into. Yeah, but I'm fine with steps. Yeah, see, so you want that next step, right? How do I, how do I take that into a theme? Okay. <laughs> well, I was curious, um, the, I didn't go over both as I just said the first day, and I thought, you know, as a newbie coming in, it was really, really cool. And I picked up a book just to kind of get around it before I went to the camp. But I was kind of curious, during those two days, was there just like a, like a central modules, like intro? Like these are the ones, like views I had to find out later out kind of on my own. And then like I saw what it could do, and I thought this is a really cool thing. And the book kind of comes with some of those, but I'm wondering, just kind of like the really good modules that can really do a lot of things. So you can actually see, for me, it's like kind of coming new into Drupal. I, I want to see what it can do. And so I guess like an overview of like the ones that you use like day in and day out. So let me ask the people who both presented or maybe have considered to present at the camp and or an LA Drupal meeting, how many of you would be willing to speak at a session during like a beginner track that we would actually organize the session list? Like say modules 101, blocks 101, themes 101, in kind of the order fashion. How many would be interested in maybe speaking on those topics brought to presenters? A couple of you? A few of you? Wonderful, thank you. Okay, good. This was something that we actually talked about a little bit was do we massage the topics, especially for the beginner track, okay? It sounds like definitely from your opinion yeah, that really something like that would have been very useful. And uh, while I did see that, of course, you know, it's a camp and people were volunteering their sessions. So it's not like, you know, we were gonna really kind of lock people out from the slot because we really wanted them to cover blocks or, you know, something for that time. Um, but I think for next year, I think, uh, you know, would anybody be hurt that the beginner's track was actually organized like that, like as if it was taken right out of the Drupal handbook? Would anybody be offended to that? Highly doubt it. I can do that again. Okay. I think we're going to be a Okay, okay. <coughs> See, that might be a trend the other camps about. Show it in the um, Okay, any other points? Uh, I, did you, you were going to bring up something? Well, what you like? I see one of the inherent flaws with having such a large user base is that you have a lot of people who have different levels of expertise. Yeah. And so when you're giving a talk and you want to accommodate for all those needs, it's, it's hard to balance all that stuff out. Yeah. So you could bore the beginner guys because they, everything you're saying is just going over the head. Or the more advanced guys are like, I already know this stuff, I don't really want to pay attention to it. And as a speaker, you try to organize it where it does balance out. And the unfortunate flaw is that you're not effective on either or. That's why for a beginner, they're not learning anything that they can take home and actually do something with. they just like, well, I've seen him do it. But I've seen him do it. It's something I know yeah. that's out there, right? That's why, yeah. that's why it's good to have beginning views, advanced views, or something like that. But um, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, uh, I'm not trying to make a plug or anything, but I just realized I, I um, wrote a little, little article about um, doing a, um, something from, uh, a template from scratch okay. and um, Drupal on my blog or whatever. And it just has some basic core CSS, but you could kind of use that or use the page for building something from scratch. Sure. I'll bring it up. Yes, Why not? <laughs> what is um, it? It's called uh, designdog.net. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, dot net. Right. I, I want to add to this too, that thing. Blog? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's on a blog. Okay. And then. Um, Suzanne Summers, cool man. Yeah. Um, 
Let's see. Is it on there? Oh, don't tell me. Uh, it's got to go up to the front, our top. Uh, line three, column Drupal. Okay. So on designdog.net, there's an article here covering uh, a template. Uh, what this is, it just covers the basics on how flexible Drupal is. It's so flexible that you can literally just build anything from scratch. You know, everybody's you know talking about the Zen thing, which I think is great. Uh, it is it is great, um, but um, a lot of people don't even want to start with that. Some people just want instead of like taking what you've got and then pulling everything out, you know, have to sub subtract. This is about starting from a complete base scratch and then building up. Okay, so can, can I can I speak to that though? Oh uh, no. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't want to take away building from scratch because that. Yes, I, I that's, mean, right. That's I, awesome, especially once you know what you're doing. The problem is figuring out what to do sometimes, and Zen is really, really good at having the whole baseline there. But what were we uh, say? Well, the whole idea is I'm not promoting either way because there's there's pros and cons about each way. Mm -hmm. um, but what all I'm trying to say, what I was trying to point out was, is that you can build something from scratch, and that's something that some some people want to go down. And, and I, I totally agree because Zen has some serious flaws in it. But, but that's kind of the point of the community is if we all keep giving back, um, it, it will continue to to be like the standards compliant um, theme, if you will. Uh, so, so it'll work across browsers. That's one of the things that really minimizes some of the testing that I need to do. Um, if I know that I'm not changing core things. So, so, so core, if I'm not moving too much stuff around, or, or getting into the code, overriding the CSS stuff. Could, um, could, I, could I ask that you actually link this on the resources page on natalietriple.org? Because that's where we're putting yeah. links to videos, yeah, articles. It's, it's, it's just yeah, just a quick write-up I did for from scratch. I'm going to delicious this right now. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, there, you know, I mean, really, there needs to be more articles about definitely even doing it from scratch all across the board. I, you know, I talked to actually uh, somebody from Aquia that came to the camp, uh, Karen, and I made a point, you know, I don't see enough on the design end, and he's like, yeah, well, you know, that's a big area that we're trying to, you know, hope that comes up, you know, kind of up to par with a lot of well, other sites. So there's, there's a big... Um, especially even with Drupal Basics, there's a lot of education going on still right now. So I, I think this would be a great resource link on our resource page. I don't, I almost, well, real quick on that, I almost don't want to say anything, but I'm kind of like a long, I used to bad word, but I'm a long time gym user, mm -hmm. developer. It's not a bad word. Yeah, well, you know, um, nothing wrong with that, but um, I love Drupal, um, and that's why I'm here, because I'm really, Want to completely transition over to Drupal and do nothing but that? Actually, I just had a conversation with somebody from Inquia about this, and um, that's sort of the problem. Is, is there's such a learning curve that's not that has a big void that's not been um, addressed in a way. I mean, not that it's anybody's. It's not anybody's fault because um, you know the, the, the CMS is, is what it is. But uh, the thing with Joomla is it has such a heavy graphical uh, and easy um, uh, UI base to it. And Drupal just, is just you know, code based and you know, language and everything. So uh, hopefully they're kind of working on that. And, and, and uh, Joomla needs to work on security and a lot of other things. So. Yeah. Um, to, to your point, uh, sorry. That's a, that's another thing. To the, to the point of that, uh, when Drupal's you, turning into a product, and they've when said you, that. When so you work on a Joomla site for a client, and especially if you're dealing with um, uh, uh, the e-commerce solution, the one e-commerce solution that you're dealing yeah. with, and then you're talking about customization. Now, I don't know if you ever dealt with it, or I'm sure most, most people have, but if you ever have to deal with code, it's just like a nightmare because it is all over the place. So you start doing modifications, and then after a while, you just like start going insane because you lost, you know, you're doing 12 different, it's all over the place, you know. So, Let me ask real quick, has anybody here actually developed a module for Drupal yet? A couple of us? Is there anybody here who would like to develop a module in Drupal? Okay. All right, very good. Just learn it next month. Next month? Let's do it. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, also too, yeah, again, topics, 
that you would like to see at the sessions here. Um, we do presentations, we do case studies. One thing I've always been interested in is how, how you pitch Drupal or CMS or just you know the whole the web turns to a client who's not that savvy and they know that they need something more than your basic website. But you know, how do you sell them on the CMS versus you know how do you build a static website? Um, you know, how how technical do you, how technical do you get? How much kind of jargon do you use? Do so the question is, uh, how do you sell and how do you explain Drupal to clients, right? Yeah, because I have a client that I, you know, I get it very vague. You, you want to update your stuff yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to update it? You know, and, and did these things? Didn't get into you know what it was and how I was doing it, and then you know now I'm giving her more information now that it's down the path and she's all happy. It's, Got it. it's one of those things I'm not sure, you know. I, okay, so how would some of you explain in Soul Drupal? Yes. Um, I would give her two prices. The <laughs> cost to build and yeah. the cost to maintain. And she can make that choice, right? So it's $400 a month if you don't do Drupal for maintenance, and it's only $20 a month for, for Drupal if you do maintenance. Versus, versus what? I mean, versus what? Like using something else? Or? Well, if you just has to make updates manually, you know, it's no. going to cost you how many hours? Well, update it or she can update yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Group, right? I would say, Pick you know, when, when you're dealing with it, go on the back end yourself. <laughs> I think what you're getting is, uh, is maybe you want to show a cost of something custom that would not be from an open solution. Well, no, no, I'm just saying, like, what's the cost of him to up, update it for her? Every month. I think he's talking about empowering the user to do it herself. She can make the option to save the money or she can use it. Isn't that like a video? And said there were three videos and it's going to be really well. Uh, they were on the Aquia site. Yeah, so that would be also something that. Let me extrapolate or make my, my question or my topic a little clearer without spending three hours. Because that's that was, you know, I, I went and sat in the meeting and, you know, and, you know, after briefing a couple of guys, you know, one of the guys said, drop that part, drop that part, just stick with that part, and, you know, and, you know, condense it, get it down to four or five, ten minutes, you know, get it, get it simple and, and sweet, so that you can pitch to a board that doesn't go. Yeah, you've got, to, you've got to figure out what their hot points are when you're selling it to them. I mean, if you know the client is banging on about, I have to update my contact every single day, well, then that's the part that you need to focus on selling them for. If they're talking about scalability and it's a larger company, then focus on the scalability points. Figure out exactly what their key decision kind of like metrics are before you go into the meeting. Yeah. And then when you go to the meeting, your sales pitch is just what their decision points are. Right. Are you going to either way? Level. I, I agree with that point. Definitely also I would recommend uh, making a suggestion that with a CMS solution, um, uh, the time needed to actually post an update is only as short as their staff's availability and you don't have to wait on the design team that has to schedule it and then take in, you know, because I mean, I, look, from doing web designs for quite a, while, quite a long time, you know, with certain clients, they get the form they have to fill out for any request change because they bug me that much. And there's the other clients that can IM me on Skype, you know, and then I'll say it in. I'm recording this. <laughs> so, my clients know where you're at <laughs> when you get the form. Uh, and, you know, so, you know, you can go through protocol or protocol or protocol, and what I try to let people know is, you know, everybody from the person that greets me when I walk into your office all the way to the CTO would be available to edit content on the site and you wouldn't have to call me to add a comma. You know, and so when they kind of hear that, they're like, oh, I don't, yeah. I don't have to call him, which means, you know, one hour minimum time or something, whatever it be the case. Uh, that cost is really easily taken back into the project and then actually considered, I would say, almost as a kind of profit of the system, you know what I mean? You should just do like a create content and show them and be like, ta-da. <laughs> That's a good one. You know, show them what they're missing, you know? Yeah. So that might be even your two-minute demo. Yeah. You'd be surprised, too, uh, how how much the client is getting, you know, clients are getting smarter and smarter, especially when it has to do with money. So the thing about it is, is that, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, like comparing to another CMS or to try to explain functionality, uh, just let them loose on the web. There's That's the great thing is there's so much information out there, especially uh, regarding Drupal. I mean, what I tell them, I mean, what you can say is don't take my word for it. Go and there's, you know, 
five million other people that are commenting on the same thing that we're talking about. In other words, the same CMS. And that's what I tell people is that I only deal with open source uh, development. So you know, they can you can you can take them to the module uh, or the uh, download section of Drupal, and they can see like the thousands and thousands of modules. And then basically, what you tell them is it's functionality built in versus no functionality. You have a static website, there's nothing going on except for a smell like, you know, static web page. Does anyone know uh, the full uh, add on to your, your question? Has anyone ever actually compiled like a couple of PowerPoint slides on selling Drupal to somebody? Like stats, uh, for example? I think the Acquia website has a little bit of a slideshow. There's other, there's other companies out there, commercial companies that definitely sell Drupal search. Take slideshow, search for Drupal, and see if, see if anybody else has created those. Yeah. You know what I thought? I thought was pretty good is the beginning of the Drupal Camp keynote presentation mm -hmm. was a pretty good sell in Drupal. Yeah. Um, and we'll have that. Yeah, we have that recorded, so again, when it's up. Again, I'm actually Google for Google keynote. I used to see it up last time I checked. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, but you know, if you type in Drupal in Google. You'll see all the people that are paying for Aspay through Google or any other place. I mean, these guys are like paying some money out of really trying to pump Drupal for to you know for a return. So I mean, go and look at some of their websites. And Check their site out, yeah. And how they sell because you know mm -hmm. if they're not getting if they're paying for you know Aspay or advertising and they're not getting return, it's kind of a problem. Okay, we definitely need to start actually wrapping up. I want to give uh, 15 minutes for everybody to kind of hang out and network and chat. Um, and then I gotta boot everybody out because they'll boot me out. Hey, so, real quick, I was wondering, um, do you have any advice for wireframing tools for Mac? Omnigraffle. Omnigraffle. Yeah, everybody will say it. Omnigraffle. Yeah. Actually, uh, so I, I just want to thank everybody for coming down. Thank you. And also, I would like to thank our main presenter of the night, Rain, for showing stand up for Star. Uh, we meet next month, last Tuesday of the month. It's not posted, but it should be online within the next week or less, okay? Thank you all for coming. Talks amongst yourselves. Transform. What's up, brother? What's up? Hold on. Let me get, let me, let me get done here real quick. How are you doing? I don't know. Mike? <laughs>